How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Sixkiller, and today we're going to be checking out a game called Bad Credit. This is what I did mention in our upcoming games of February video, but it didn't have a trailer at the time. But it did seem interesting. It's a sort of uh, political, absurdist, drama type, visual novel ish type thing. Choices matter and all that sort of jazz. You know, the kind of shit we do around here. Um, the developer was kind enough to send us over a copy to check out. I don't know if this is going to be a full blown um, series, but. I say we do half an hour or something and uh, see how it goes and you guys let me know what you think of it. It's looking pretty impressive so far. Uh, it's not out for a few more days as of the moment of recording. I'm not exactly sure when it is out though. But no doubt my naivety is going to get me killed like always. Uh, Brucey Banana, of course. And his gender is Banana, obviously. Um, well, um, yeah, let's go with that. The reality, the good, the bland, and the bloody. The flower factory. The original timeline. Um, let's stick with the good, the bland, and the bloody, I suppose. Enter. Three miles out of Nico Demis, North Dakota. Give it up, girls. It's over. Willie's hanged and dead. It won't be over till I draw my last breath, Mr. McMaster. That's not how it works anymore, Giles. For Christ's sake, we joined the Union today. Dakota's a state now. Matter of fact, it's two states, North and South. Lay down your gun belt. You're under arrest. On what account? Living free? North, South, East, West, Territory, State, Capital, District? It all matters naught to me, Mr. McMaster. We're in America. Which defines this place is not the laws, what defines this place is not the laws under which we live, or the organization of our government. What makes America is a common set of ideals, a shared dream, a dream of liberty, freedom. I can allow you to, cannot allow you to arrest my liberty, Mr. McMaster, that would be most un-American. You ain't got nothing against me, what are you going to arrest me for? You're under arrest for five counts of unlicensed animal husbandry, nine counts of cattle theft, one count of telegram fraud, two counts of conspiracy against the union, one count mis- Miss, what is that? Misignation? With a Lakota Sioux Indian. One count of assault on an officer of the law and triple homicide. Whoa. Why'd you end with triple homicide? Half that ain't even true, Mr. McMaster. The other half aren't even, very, aren't even bad things. Unlicensed animal husbandry. You ought to let up. I've had quite enough of your crackpot musings, Mr. Gideon. By the power vested in me by these United States, I'm ordering you to lay down your arms and enter the custody, custody of the law. You are judged by a jury of your peers. I'm giving you the chance to die like a man, not like a beast. What well, sounds like a more beastly way to go? Heard into a slaughterhouse and put down, or shot down with my hand on my pistol and my feet on the ground? We'll see who lives and dies right, right here, right now. You ain't taking me in now. Draw, goddammit. That's what it has come to? That is what it has come to. I'd ask you to make your peace, but it seems a tall order considering the extent of your crackpot lunacy, Giles. <laughs> Are we dead already? Are we dead already? Oh man, we're dead already. <laughs> nope, maybe not. And there's that story of that Reg McMaster and that Giles Gideon gang. This here is the rope they used to hang Willie Bratz. He was hanged over near the old oil pump there. What are you doing out here? Me? Well, you see, I'm on parole. They got me cleaning up this here highway as a part of a deal we made. Let me just uh, adjust my settings real quick. A few hundred more hours of this, and they'll take my ankle bracelet off. Ain't that the darndest thing? you think because I'm out here all day cleaning up the highway, they'd give me an ankle bracelet that I could actually move around in, but no. Ah, I'm just complaining. How about you, kid? I have to ask you the same thing. What are you doing here? I'm heading south. South? Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. If I were you, I'd make it snappy, though. It's already November, and the winter here has swollen your hole if you ain't from around here. Say, where are you from? You strike me as one of them folks from across the border. You ain't a Canuck, are you? 
Titanic. You think, I don't know the local lingo, I'm afraid. Um, listen, what was your name again? Robin. Thanks for telling me about Mr. Uh, Mr. McMaster and Gideon, Robin. It's nice to have met you, though. I really have to get going about now. Right, well, I wish you luck on your travels. Heck, maybe I'll see you around. Sure. Well met. So, you're an alright fella. Safe travels, okay? Okay. So, we're still alive then? <laughs> or are we just jumping between people at the moment? I don't even know what's going on. She's a beauty, ain't she? 1979 Plymouth Cuda. Sure is. Right? Used to be an old timer's car. His name was, uh, he gives a shit. Point is, he had this car since the early 80s. He was one of them yuppie types. Lived in Los Angeles. Bought plastic and shit from Japan and sold it at a huge markup. Loved the night. Loved his blow. Loved his bottle. Loved his car most of all. How do you know all this shit? I talked to the repo guy who talked to the old timer. Pretty moving story, really. Not much of a car guy myself, but I don't know. Go on, tell me about the guy. So, uh, it's got a point toward the late 80s that the old timer couldn't stomach it. You know how it is in the business world. Backstabbing, suing, extortion, fraud, con artistry, pyramid schemes, you name it. He couldn't take it. Sold his racket to a Chinese guy. Moved to Kansas City with his new fi- <laughs> Um, with his new fiance. She was a school teacher. A couple of years a senior. Not too common for a yuppie in that part of the country. At that point in history. They moved to Kansas City. She got a job at the public school system. He found work in telemarketing. The only piece he kept of his old self was the car. At some point or other, I suppose the monotony started to kick in. He was even worse off than before. Couldn't handle the heat of the kitchen. Couldn't bear the cold of the waiting room. He couldn't go back. He thought to himself, too hard, too stressful. But he couldn't stay here. He had to go somewhere. That somewhere was his car. At this point, his car was getting a little beat up. The model was aging along with him. He decided to himself one day that he would start taking real care of the car again. Oil changes, tire changes, resprays, engine customizations. Every day after work he'd come home to his car and keep it young. Younger than the day he bought it. In that there car, he saw the best in what he left behind. Youth, energy, power, luxury. In that there car, he saw the best of himself. The kind of thing he couldn't see in his telemarketing gig. Over the years, his back gave out. His hair went grey. His skin wrinkled. But his car... His car maintained the same glint it had on the day of its manufacturing, October 10th, 1979. Toward the 2010s, his wife died. He couldn't afford rent anymore. He had to move into a trailer park on a loan from Capital One. He lost everything. Everything but him and his car. Earlier last month, he was running a week late on his loan repayments. Capital One sent the repo guy to go to take the car from him. He told me he had to pry the keys from the old tie of his hands. He got in the car, drove it straight here. That was yesterday. Today's today, and you're the only one who came to the auction. It guaranteed the reservation price, which is 75000 Do you want it? That's a lot of money. I feel kind of bad for the old fella. It is what it is, I guess. I'll take his car. Say, bro, what do you need this car for anyway? Just need a trusty steed to get me out of here? Well, I guess I'll see you in another life, cowpoke. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking smart ass. <laughs> this guy's got an atmosphere in spades, man. <laughs> I can't do a convincing American accent, I'm afraid, so. <laughs> Well, we got ourselves a car. <laughs> a nice one of that. A lot of money, though.
this is, this looks really nice. It's really nice. Corona. <laughs> Empress Club, South Tucson, Tucson, Arizona. Twenty fifteen, eh? I can do 50,000 on a fixed rate of 20%. It might sound exorbitant, but in this line of work, Nino, 20% is borderline phil philanthropy. That 20% interest is money I have to put through shell companies. That means company tax, sales tax, income tax, I could go on. I understand, Teresa. You're a clever kid. I'm sure you know what an investment, plays, investment business plays for the long game. So I'll be fair. I trust you get back to me by, let's say, December 1st. That's a year from today. How do you feel about those numbers? In cash, right? In cash. Sounds doable? Sounds doable? If it just sounds doable, you shouldn't be here. I'm kind of the most Nino. But if you can't pay me back, I'm sure you can imagine what businesswoman like myself has to do to maintain a reputation. Are you sure you want to do this Nino? <laughs> Fuck yes! <laughs> just write the name and sign here. <laughs> Loan agency, Brucey Banana, bad credit loans, bad credit loans, excellent, sounds perfect, let's sign. Why don't we just... Exit to menu or continue game? No, we'll continue, we'll continue. Interesting. Well, we got 50 grand now, I mean the cars cost me 75, so... <laughs> Why can't we just sell the car and get a cheaper, shittier one? South of the Boneyard. <laughs> that sounds worrying. Oh, we still have most of the money left, that's good. Welcome to Investodia. Please verify you're using Investodia for the location. Tucson, Arizona, United States of America. Verify. Okay. Hello, Brucey is this? Yeah, that's me. How are you today? Alright, what you got for me? I went metal detecting this valley yesterday, as you do. And I happened upon a very gold necklace. When I pawned it, I thought it'd be worth something upwards of $30, right? But when I pawned it, the guy says it used to belong to a famous cowgirl from the Old West. One eyed Jenny, they call her. I managed to flip the necklace for $600. So I get to research about this one eyed Jenny. Turns out, where I was metal detecting in the valley was where she set up camp after her train robberies and whatnot. I'm thinking of high five illegals, buy more metal detectors and we beeline through that valley digging up whatever riches we can find. I'm thinking, oh, I need to clean 2,000 to get this operation off the ground. So, what do you say? How can you be sure there's more jewellery? Well, I can't, but we have to take risks to make it rich. That's why they call it a fortune, young. Come up with something more solid. Oh, well, uh, I'm sorry you couldn't do business here. I'm sure I'll find another way. Nah, man, I need something, I need something better than that. Come on. Uh, what do we got here? Research suggests that attainable genetically modified plants may aid in solving world hunger. Vulcan scramble for technological solutions to agricultural crisis. Warren Buffett urges followers to invest in gold over e-currencies or pop culture collectibles. Oh, he was just talking about kind of pop culture collectibles, I guess. Well, not really. Western Annie Oakley biopic proves box office hit. New age for Western. Westerns is upon us. New mega casino puts Tucson on the map. Hi, my name's Mitch. Mitch Mitrovich. <laughs> Mitch Mitrovich. <laughs> Hello, Mitch. I'm here today to share with you a brilliant opportunity to take a piece of the gambling industry for yourself. Let's start from the very beginning. I'm obviously going to have to get into some into some shitty uh, industries here, being a dodgy uh, debt. Lone dude. I was born in Atlantic City. Both my mother and father were dealers at a casino. I was learning to count cards before I entered my ABCs. I was entering high profile Jack Jack Black Jack tournaments before I graduated middle school. I'm a gun, plain and simple. If you got a deck, I can count it. I need to make some money. Obviously this is telling us what we should and shouldn't invest in, right? I guess. Who's next? Okay, I see my nice car out there at least. That's good. I like how I can interact with everything. That's pretty nice. This one? Oh! Hello! Gunnery Sergeant First Class Marcus Cove... 
Kovacic, Kovacic, 3rd Marine Division, United States Marine Corps. Enlisted September 19th, 2001. Honorable discharge March 10th, 2013, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. I'm here because I would like to present a business opportunity to you, sir. Are you familiar with Beanie Babies, sir? Yeah? Well, my uncle had the largest collection of Beanie Babies in the southwest United States, sir. He left me a quarter of his collection in his will, sir, and I intend to sell these collectibles to pay off my mortgage, sir. First, I need to organize an auction, sir. Last night I spent three hours crunching the numbers. Only three grand to cover the cost of auctioneer and a venue, sir. I guarantee I'll pay you back, sir. Well, I mean, I've got to... Pay to get someone to do it, right? Okay, fine. It's less dodgy, at least. Would you be happy with $22,450? Fuck, he said three grand, man. I'll give you three grand. Yes, sir. What will I owe you, sir? Um, well, we're a shark, right? So, in this country, at least, I don't know how it is in America, but in this country, if you go and get a personal loan, you're going to be paying 20% from a proper business. So, more than that. <laughs> uh, let's say 40. Sorry, I looked at everything, and I can't go over 25. 25! 28. Alright, fine. That's barely more than you can get at fucking GE. <laughs> I can work with that, sir. Thank you for your time, sir. He better be back or I'll kick his ass. New investment, Beanie Babies. So now it's an investment. Okay, cool. I mean, we haven't got any, any notes about Beanie Babies, so... I don't know if we're, like, winning here, but, you know, whatever. Alright, what do we got? Oh, you're a dodgy looking guy. Welcome. I graduated from the University of Arizona with a bachelor's in civil engineering. You know that bridge over the stream in the midtown? Yeah? Well, I did that. I guess I'm working on a crazy new carbon dioxide generator that'll make thousands of millions of dollars. I just need money for an industrial hose, a reel of duct tape and some stainless steel tags, please. Carbon dioxide generator? Yeah, it's used in agriculture and stuff, I guess. I wouldn't want to bore you with the details. What? You don't need more fucking carbon dioxide? How much do you need? 3500 will work. Not interested. Okay, cool. See you later, I guess. Stop generating carbon dioxide, you son of a bitch. I can do that with my car. Just go turn my car on. That'll generate some carbon dioxide for you. Asshole. What kind of a fucking muppet does he think I am, huh? <laughs> What time do we call it a day, huh? Hello. Or should I say, hola. 300 years ago, these lands were within the grasp of the Mexican Empire. 5,000 years ago, these lands were within the grasp of the Tohono Udham peoples? So, perhaps I should say, aloha. Convoluted story, I'll admit, but the point is, ownership is a matter of time. What is once yours will soon become another's. I'm following. This is especially the case for a young girl named Simone. Simone is currently working on a research paper about the American Revolution. She is soon to complete Unit 2, 3 of 2nd grade comprehension and Unit 4 of 6th grade arithmetic. Would it surprise you to learn that our young Simone is actually a chimpanzee? Yes. Okay, let's take a step back for a moment. When I was young, I had a dog named Perseus. After a while, our family couldn't afford to feed Perseus. This is when my mother sold him to a nice man on a farm in Kentucky. The proceeds, of course, went to an Atari 7800 I received on my 11th birthday. To tie this mess of concepts together, we'll just say that young Simone is fit for a change of owners. Here's the plan. We fly a Beechcraft B36 <laughs> Bonanza over the Vernonheim and West Laboratory on 11th Avenue where Simone is being held captive. A demolition expert will skydive off the roof when we will breach the ceiling with strategically placed C4. Once the lab has been infiltrated, you will laser open Simone's cage, breach the window overlooking the corner of the west and Saint Street, where they will jump onto a military grade mattress placed on the sidewalk. They will then enter a van parked across the street and drive to an airfield in Green Valley, where the Beechcraft B36 Bonanza has since landed. Simone will be recaged within the aircraft and flown to another airfield outside Santiago, Cuba, via a flight path cleared by the Cuban airspace administrators. Waiting there will be the Chinese neurotech magnate Yu Baifong 
to make a transaction of 23.8 million Swiss francs for Simone. I know what you're thinking. Who gave you the blueprint to the laboratory? Well, to answer you that question, it would mean I'd have to kill you. Now, it's my end of the bargain to purchase the mattress with Simone and demolition on land. Demolition to land. Which will run me an estimate of 5,500. We'll have your money with a percent, with a 10% markup to you by Friday this week, 4 a.m. When opportunity arises, a person has two options. These options should seem pretty clear by now. I trust you make the informed decision. What is this, Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back? What the fuck? This is insane. You're insane. What is sanity, compadre? What makes you any more sane than the tweaker down the street? I want a full, well-reasoned argument. Intro. Body paragraph one, body paragraph two, body paragraph three, and conclusion. You might have a point. <laughs> You're goddamn right I have a point. Smell the air, taste it, hear it blow, don't blink. Let your eyes feel it. Can you sense it? The world circling the drain. Either get sucked down with it, or watch from the edge of the bath. Full bottle of bubbly in one hand, big ass cigar in the other. You know what? This is insane, but I have to know how this turns out. Let's do this. <laughs> Very well. You want a 5,500? I'll give you five grand. That's good. Now, you'll get your 110% by the end of the month. Done. Thanks for the business. Good luck. <laughs> that was a bad investment, but I just have to know how that turns out. <laughs> I just have to know. 10%, that's shocking. What a terrible fucking return. These banks don't even give loans that good around here. <laughs> Do we just stay here all night, just sitting at the office, at the fucking desk? All night long, just in case someone decides to come in. Yep, yep, yep. Smell that? That's gross. Feel it in your hands? Yuck. Look at it. It's brown. Ew, mud. A big fucking pool of wet brown mud. Got us all looking like pigs. With Sama Allah, disgusting fucking creatures. You know what? I'm about ready to get myself out of the mud. How about you? I'm not following. <laughs> Listen, we just need time. Two hours. Tops. For what? To get ourselves out of the fucking mud. The mud? How's that Kanye track go? I told him I finished school and I started my own business. They say, oh, you graduated? No, I decided I was finished. It's like that, except we ain't graduated from no university. We graduated from the mud. I just quit my job for this shit. Have you got a business idea or not? Alright, business ideas. Exhibit A, gold digging. Not like marrying a rich dude, but like, taking a bus to Oregon and panning for gold in the mountains. It's been at least 150 years since the Chinese dudes tried it. More gold probably resurfaced in rivers and shit. Exhibit B, smuggling fake Gucci belts out of Liberia. That one needs a little more starting capital on account if I need some plane tickets. Um... I'm interested. <laughs> For the gold digging or the belt smuggling? Gold digging. You know what? Just give me anything around 1k and I'll uh, double it or triple it. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, man. 1k. Alright, 900. Cool, dude. Now what are you? You said double it. Double it. How about like 60%? That sounds fair. You said double it or triple it, bitch. <laughs> Alright, fine. 60% is not doubling it. <laughs> okay, okay, let's work with that, Omi. Now, look down in the mud, I realised how shallow it actually was. Thanks for the business, your business, Holmes. You're welcome. I mean, that was a waste of money as well, but whatever. At least it's 60%. I should only be uh, worried about the, the percent interest, really. Alright, keep going. Give me another day. I want to see some of these return on investments, man. At least something. Or at least I want to see how the, the monkey escape goes terribly wrong. <laughs> hey friend, you after a drink? Sure. What can I get you? Um, let's have whiskey. Excellent choice, compadre. Here you go. Thanks. You know, you look new in this town. I am. So what brings you here? If you don't mind me asking that is work. Heard there were a lot of opportunities down south. Work? I suppose that's the only conceivable reason someone would be willingly, would willingly come here. I got more folks to get to, so I'll leave you to it.
I drank my drink. Can I have another one? Oh, look, it's the lady that lent us money. Hey, bitch. <laughs> hey, I want you to know something. In your world, people make a few thousand dollars and start to think they're, ger they're god. Life for most folks is just a big 65 year long ass rape of getting fucked over and being fascist slaves to the imperialist consumerist capitalist machine. I feel that. As soon as the foreman lets the worker drone choose what he wants to do with his own hammer, our worker drone starts bashing the wrong skulls in. He ends up getting himself murked. Can't fault you there. That's because I'm unfaultable. Brass tax. You're in the most dangerous business of all. The money business. You need a plan B and C and D for every move. I'm here to help you figure that out. Meet me at this place at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Don't be late. Okay. Good. <laughs> I'm way too naive. I just trust everybody that I walk into, you know? <laughs> it's just like real life. Diana's Vista del... I don't... I don't even know. <laughs> Let's cut the chit chat and get down to brass tacks. What's your offer? My offer? An escape route. Insurance if you will. Before your shit hits the fan, you want a way out. I'm selling you that way out. Fake passports, wigs, plane tickets, accommodation, the whole shebang. Okay, could you get more specific? Where would I be going? How much would it cost? That's the thing, it costs nothing. Until the moment you decide you need to get the fuck out of, up out of Dodge, you don't even have to think about paying me. All I'm asking is you have 10 grand on hand, because that's what I charge. I'll be waiting in a private airstrip for you. You give me the money, they let you on the plane. Don't go gambling your assets to the last time, or else I'm not going to be able to help you. That's what this meeting is. Me informing you that I'll always be ready to get you out of the country into a safe and peaceful life in a nation that doesn't extradite to the United States for the low, low cost of 10 grand. The second volume of our meeting will concern where the plane will be going in the event we do meet on the tarmac of that airstrip. So, got any preferences? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I don't know half of these places. <laughs> um, I don't know. We're somewhere nice. <laughs> somewhere warm. Uh, let's go... I mean, Mexico is nice and close, right? It's probably warm too. Let's go to Mexico. That won't work. You need a country that wouldn't extradite to the United States. Who knows how many feds are sniffing around Teresa's circle? Okay. A lot of things you don't know, Brucey. Things you shouldn't know. Things you don't want to know. Now pick a country that won't... Fuck, I don't know much about the United States, man. I bet China wouldn't. China? Might be a little tough dealing with the party, but otherwise... Decent choice. Lots of protection. The United States feds would have a nightmare getting to you. China, we'll go with that. Until then, have a nice breakfast, Brucey. Okay. What's for breakfast, anyway? Flapjacks? <laughs> I hope it's flapjacks. <laughs> hey friend, hey, spare a nickel? Don't have any cash in me, can I buy you something? Uh, when you next go to the store, can you please buy me some dog treats? There's this gym around the corner, I'm just constantly slicing and sicking his dog on me. I was hoping I could make friends with the dog by giving him treats. I got you man, I'll pick you up some dog treats. Thank you friend, have a nice day. Quick go convenience. Nice. Let's get some dog treats. Would you like anything else? Uh, do you sell dog treats here? Uh, yeah, I have some premium stuff at the back here. Thanks. So, credit card or cash? Uh, credit card please. Okay, just scan here. MX. Scan. Thanks. Would you like a receipt? No thanks. Okay, have a good day. Brucey's place. That's the time for another day, is it? Another hard day at the job. Tonight in Mexico, Sinaloans rejoice as infamous drug trafficker Joaquin El Champo Guzman is captured for a third time since 1993 by Mexican Marines. After a raid on one of Chapo's Los Mocas compounds, Chapo fled his compound through a secret tunnel, only to be spotted shortly outside. Shortly after, outside of a Walmart, Chapo hijacked a Ford Focus and escaped onto the highway. Mexican Marines eventually caught up to Chapo, less than five miles out of town. More on this after the break.
This is very interesting. I feel like um, we're going to lose a lot of money. No revenue. Lost three grand. Oh man. No one wanted Mark <laughs> Marcus Kovac Kov kicks beanie babies. Oh, this one's definitely gonna go bad. Full profit. Whoa, we did it. What? The monkey mission succeeded. The plan went perfectly. And, and UA Bifong held his end of the deal. The agreed upon amount was waiting for me. On my bedside table as I woke in the morning hours of Friday. On the bedside table. Like $23 million or whatever it was. It's just sitting on your bedside table. Mud. $900 loan on 60% interest. Result. Pending. Loan from Teresa. Plus five. <laughs> plus 50,000. Oh man. This is bad. Account balance, 39,318. We got 10 months. Well, that's our first day down. I suppose we should wrap this episode up here. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Not exactly what I expected it to be, but I like it. I like the dialogue. Very funny. Although it's full of uh, Spanish words and stuff that I'm not familiar with, I'm afraid. Being not really from that part of the world, you know. But, uh, very cool nonetheless. I like it. I like it. Yeah, not very familiar with a lot of the uh, American-centric terminology and things like that, you know. Apologies from being um, unfamiliar with that stuff, but let me know if you want to see more. I think it's very interesting. It's it's well written. It looks beautiful. It's got awesome sound effects and music. I'm very interested to see where this all goes in the end. But uh, at least we got a way out now. If anything goes, if shit hits the fan, we can just 10 grand out to China. We're done. Brilliant. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks again, Athwee, and I'll see you in the next one.